all. We're here, it's race day. It's Carol and Ash Super Twins race day. More importantly, it's race one. I mean, we're here in the Holden area and there's a real buzz about it, isn't there? There's so much going on, teams are getting ready. It's so exciting. Yeah, the smell of the fuel and the anticipation in the air, it's amazing. It's been a fantastic week so far. The weather's been good, a little bit overcast here, but we think that's going to burn off and we should see more record-breaking yep. laps going on today. Let's do it. bike's been you know running really well haven't had any problems with it I haven't really made any changes because I feel like the bike's really been in a good range and I feel like there's far more to come from me than, than chopping and changing setup and trying to like really uh, alter the bike in any way that's going to really assist I think the bike's already in a good range I just need to sort of build myself up to match where the sort of the bike is being five years away from the event uh, makes it hard to get straight back to the the top level guys speed so you know, there's, a, there's still a fair bit between where I am and you know where I think the lead pace is going to be, but you know, hopefully uh, each lap I can uh, continue to improve. So Andrew, that's the first Carol Nash Super Twins in the books. Yep. I think the winner was as we expected, but yep. plenty going on behind that. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, I think Dunlop, we always sort of expected him to win, but I mean, massive advantage to over 26 seconds he won by. Second and third uh, was where the real race was happening, really. Coward and Brown, they were sort of chopping back and forward. Michael put the hammer down early on. You know, he's, he's, he had problems with that bike last year. He said he has a few problems with it earlier in the, earlier in the week and, and technician actually came over and drove all the way from Italy because he couldn't get a flight. He just put a hammer down, built up that lead and then managed it. The talking point was, was the battle between Jamie Coward and Mike Brown and that was pretty special. There was like tense between them yeah. a, a, lot, a lot of there. I mean, over that 37 and three quarter mile course, just having tense and sometimes sort of hundreds in between sector times is, is unbelievable. So they were both really, really flying, really, really on it. I think. The pattern, like you say, is probably the bike to be on, and Kawa being on the Kawasaki, I think he rode really, really well. I think he's probably a little bit disappointing because he's been riding really well this week, but yeah. a podium's a podium, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you could tell that when you spoke to him after the race. You know, he, he was he seemed a little bit resigned to the fact that he knew there was someone behind him. He, he figured it was probably one of the patterns, and uh, yeah, they just seemed to have that little bit of an edge. They're, they're very trick things, but podium's a podium. Mm -hmm. Those guys are both on a podium now. Yeah. For me, one of the most impressive guys, and I, it, it's a surprise thing, this guy finished fourth, and it was <laughs> yeah. impressive, yeah. but Peter Hickman was quite impressive, actually. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he hasn't ridden that bike all throughout practice. He did one solo warm-up lap uh, on the morning of the race and then went out and raced and, and yeah got fourth I mean he was in some podium positions at, at some points but then yeah ended up finishing fourth I don't think that bike's quite there yet I think they probably know that there's a bit more development to happen there and uh, on the R7. Absolutely I mean he won the race on, on the pattern so he knows what a race winning yeah. bike's like they've decided to go down the route of building the Yamaha and we know the Yamaha is a great bike a lot of the development work has been done in, in America where they've got a yeah. twin series so speaking to a couple of the teams they're saying that the parts are quite late getting over because they're having to get them from America. So the bike's a little bit down on speed, a little bit down on power. I heard Peter saying, you know, he's just going to go out in the race and just get some laps in, understand the bike, and maybe on, on Friday, I think it's a tall order, but maybe on Friday they'll find a little bit more to perhaps push for that for that podium I mean, place. It could be a good three-way battle for that podium place on Friday, couldn't they? If Hickman can sort that bike out a little bit more and then with Brown and, and Coward still on it, then that could be a really interesting yeah. battle for the podium. You've got also got Josh Brooks, who yeah. actually 
solid ride from him, oh, yeah, fifth you, place. Yeah, we sort of saw some comments from the team afterwards, a fifth place on that bike, I think. He's also a bit down on mileage, I think, compared to the others, he hasn't been here for five years. So getting on that bike and, and having a fifth place, I think is a, a really solid result, and I think they're happy with that. I think there's so much to get excited about on Friday. I think the smart money is always going to be on Michael, yeah, yeah. but we know that these bikes are fast, but a little bit fragile sometimes. That battle for second through to sort of fifth or sixth, is going to be pretty hot, I yeah, think. I, I totally and, 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 and you never know, something happens that could be someone's first TT win coming there. There was, of course, one piece of sad news, which was on the last lap, popular Spanish rider, Raul Torres Martinez, 46-year-old, real passionate TT competitor. He unfortunately crashed and lost his life at Alpine. So sad we at Karen Ash sent our love and condolences to the family. It was his fifth TT he was at. He'd been out in the Superstock in the morning. He did his best ever lap, 125 miles an hour, finished 20th in the race. Um, a really sad loss and everyone in the the TT community is really feeling that, but um, as always, we race on in their honour, and uh, on Friday we get to do it again. And um, you know, we are we're looking forward to more real hot action. We're going to see can Michael Dunlop break all the records this week. The Super Twin is going to be a massive part in that, yep. and a lot of guys going for the best ever TT. So let's head to the start line for Carol now. Super Twins race two. This race flagged off by the brother of Raúl Torres Martinez, who he sadly lost in the first Super Twin encounter this TT and uh, I think that's a mark of how much the family love this sport. Michael Dunlop on the pattern, utterly dominant in this earlier on in the week. Yep, the talk is it's Michael's race to lose. Dunlop flies up the inside of Rob Hodson through course lead. Mike Brown on the 16, got his first ever podium in the first Super Twin race. About to try and pass Chris Moore. Up the inside at Glen Helen, nicely done. He's on it again. Michael Dunlop tucked in. Kirk Michael setting the pace. You hear how he's got it absolutely pinned. They're just using all the RPM through here. Dunlop now as well. Looking to repeat the feat from uh, race one. Rutter up the hill. Here comes Dunlop through the right hand up. Guys, oh, pulled the clutch. He pulls the clutch, the engine must have let go, he takes a look back, moves off the racing line immediately, and that is game over for Dunlop. Disaster. And Mike Brown leads the Super Twin TT. So problems here for Brooks in the pits. He's in a podium position, and he's hit, he's hit the cutoff on the dash, and they can't get him restarted. Disaster. Pierre Fian having the ride of his life. Might get a podium here. Mike Brown out of the nook. Cl clutch slip. Oh no! Mike Brown watches his first TT victory slip through his fingers. And, and that hands the lead to Peter Hickman on the Yamaha R7. Peter Hickman coming around the right hander. Was that almost a shake of the head there? Can he not believe this? On the Yamaha for the first time. He won last time on a pattern. Swap brands over the winter. On the gas now. Bully on oh, the pipe. What a wheel stand across the line to celebrate an absolutely tremendous day for Peter Hickman. 11th TT win. Fantastic. On the Yamaha in his first year here. Brilliant. He's stoked with that, isn't he? So he should be. So, TT23, over. I mean, it's unbelievable. The sun setting behind us, the racing's finished. We've had two glorious weeks of, of, of fantastic weather, fantastic racing. That record smashed. I mean, I can't remember a TT better than this, to be honest. It's been a fantastic year for Karen Ash to be involved. I mean, we thought Friday was going to be a record breaking day, and it was, but not in the way that we thought it was. Yeah, I mean, the story throughout the whole, the whole of this event has been can, can Michael Dunlop match his, uh, his late great uncle Joey's record or even beat it? 
the story was set up for him. Came into the Carol Nash Super, Super Twins race two, looking like he could. I mean, he was leading, wasn't he? Um, chance to equal it. Chance, chance to equal it. And then I was going to say unexpected, but it wasn't really unexpected because it happened last year, didn't it? The, the patterns are so highly strong. It's, exactly. It and two wins for Hickman. Mm -hmm. And the real history was made. Yeah. In super stock race. 136 mile an hour around the Ironman TT. Not on a super bike, but on a super stock. It's just, I mean, it's mind blowing. It doesn't feel that long ago when John McGinnis broke the 130 barrier on a super bike. So it's, it's crazy. It was staggering. I mean, the twin race, and it, you hate to say it was a surprise, but Hickman won the, the twin race, which was a surprise. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that R7, he hasn't been out on much at all. I mean, they've had a problem after problem with it. Borrowed uh, Michael Rutter's spare engine. Um, yeah, went on, to, went on to win by over, over 40 seconds. Crazy race in Carnage Super Twin race. It's like no one wanted to win it. <laughs> Two guys, Coward and Paul yeah. Jordan, out yeah. pretty much straight away. Two patterns went out. Yeah. Poor Dom Herbertson as well. He was on for a podium. Yeah, it was a real war yeah. that race. It, 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 it was, but we had two new guys on the podium. Yeah, we did. Uh, I mean, Josh Brooks, five years not being here, turn, turns up in his first year back and then on the podium. But I don't think he expected it, but he was absolutely over the moon. Yeah, he's, but yeah, he's yeah. French. I think the first French guy on the podium. He was so happy. Yeah. And he's the Hick Hickman's teammate as well. I mean, they, that whole point, they were over each other and it was, uh, it was amazing. He was just like, my ambition is to be on the TT podium and I've done it, I've done yeah. it. He was so excited. <laughs> yeah. And then the big one, the senior. Yeah, I mean, what I mean, an amazing yeah. race. It just rammed up the week perfectly, really. Exactly. You know, unfortunately for for Michael, he's going to have to come again next Wait year. Wait another 12, another 12 months you know? set up. Yeah. Yeah. It has been staggering, there's been so many stories. We've, we've been privileged to witness it and we hope that you guys have enjoyed following it on, on our channels. We can't wait for next year. Yeah, we can't wait till next year, but thank you, Adam, for an amazing 2023.